What's up, everybody? Facebook Live. How many are we live on right now, too? Uh, we got some stuff coming through. All right. All right, everybody. So, um, mixing it up a little bit this week in more ways than one. Um, but welcome to the podcast. It's 7.30 a.m. If you're on the West Coast, I have much respect because it is early. <laughs> But uh, we are glad to have you on the podcast. Uh, As always, I am Tyler Harris. I am Amanda McAbee. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Uh, uh, (laughs) (laughs) That was awkward. So something's a little different this week. Um, As you can see, Joseph has uh, made a big life decision. And started making some changes. no, today we have Amanda McAbee. Um, Amanda Mac- McAbee works with us here uh, at Consolidated Assurance in our office. Um, has just a wealth of sales experience, both on the individual sales side, and then um, I think probably her biggest uh, expertise is in the sales management or um, productivity in general. Um, you know, she, she's come in to our our business and. You know, efficiency um, and productivity have just gone through the roof and it's been a large part uh, to her skill set uh, within sales so we wanted to bring her on today so we're glad to have you thank you <laughs> and uh, like we said like we've been advertising this week uh, we're gonna do some live Q&A uh, for those of you on this screen right here you are on my page what I would love for you to do is go over to that screen uh, which is on the sales rules page so it's Facebook.com slash Sales Wolves Podcast, and uh, that's where we're going to be answering the questions from uh, live. We have done a number of different posts this week, um, advertising that we are going to be doing this live, <clears throat> and for people to put in questions, uh, submit questions in the comments of those. So we do have a pretty good list of questions already, uh, but our goal is to be able to actually ask them live here on the podcast. Uh, but before we get into that, um, it'd probably be a good idea for Miss Amanda to give you a little bit of her background, um, and then I'll talk for a little bit, and then we will jump right into the questions. Yay, cool. So, I... Oh, by the way, before you yes, start, yes. sorry. Free books. Free books. So, the Ask Gary V book by Gary Vaynerchuk. If you get your question answered, so make it good, we will give you, we will send these out. Um, this afternoon or on Monday morning and it'll get to you here in a couple of days probably the best business book I've ever read Uh, and the reason for that is I have a crazy ADD and for me to read your normal uh, book or the format of a normal book and I get done with a couple pages and I'm like what did I just read? This entire book is set up in a QA and a format so how perfect is it that we're giving it away from the Q&A show. Uh, but it's all set up in Q&A, but it's broken down into um, sections based on the general topic. So it'll say um, sales leadership, and it'll have question, answer, question, answer. And for me, that's just the best way I know to uh, be able to actually learn and comprehend from, uh, from the book. So we are going to be giving away those today. So start getting your questions ready. Sorry to interrupt. Love it. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, I have been in sales since I was 19. I actually started selling Cutco knives at, and, 19? Uh, at 19. Yep, yeah, and paid my way the rest of my way through college. I've been waiting tables prior to that. How many pennies have you cut in half? Oh my gosh. I, over, well, let's see. <laughs> I sold over $100,000 personally uh, for it, and then my team sold a, a few million dollars of, wow. of knives. That's a lot of knives. Yeah, and fast forward, have, have led teams um, since then, and my husband and I have an entrepreneurial streak, so we own a restaurant, a music menu. Um, but really, my passion, I love helping people to see what they really have inside. Mm-hmm. And I feel like sales is the opportunity to really see what you're made of and um, just go right after it. So, love it. It's interesting um, when you say, like, see what you have inside. You know, sales is probably the best place because there's so many things in life where you can say okay I'm going to become better at, at this or I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to figure out a better way for me to do this but then to be able to have those immediate results where you can actually like say okay I practice this I put it into use here's my results practice this put it into use here's my results and then you can actually just chart it you can actually I love know it. Like, if you're doing better or worse or 
you see failure immediately and yeah. you see success immediately. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, so do we have any questions? We've got a couple people behind the scenes here. Let me talk about them. So we got Jason Runkle and Ricky Craig. Um, Jason's been involved uh, since day one here on the Sales Wolves podcast doing all the uh, filming. And uh, Ricky uh, is doing the editing, um, the logo, every all the graphics. Um, he's phenomenal um, on the uh, the graphic side. Um, ooh, my Facebook lights just cut off. Sorry, people. Hold on one second. I wonder what that happened. Just got kicked right off. Bear with me one second. <clears throat> And by the way, when you do get on the live feed, if you can let us know who you are, where you're from, that would be awesome. So we can get a little interaction going. For some reason, my uh, Facebook just crashed. We broke the internet, folks. We broke Facebook. Unbelievable. All right. So for those of you that were on my page, uh, which, by the way, is facebook.com slash Tyler Harris page, um, we got kicked off, shut down for some reason. We got a lot of, a lot of technology going on in one place. What's up? So there's a few people saying that uh, the stream's not working mobile-wise, but we just checked it out and it is working from a computer fine. So some people may need to tune in from a computer to get that stream. I'm not sure why it's not working from a mobile. But uh, well, I wonder if it would work better from our computer. Would that make any difference? I mean, it's 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 rolling. I think we're good. We cool. have a few questions that rolled in too. Okay, well, we're going to roll into a few questions. We're having some little bit of technical issues on uh, mobile. If you're watching this on, on your phone, that's great. If you're watching it on a computer, apparently it's much better. Um, but that's not exactly easy for those of you uh, in the car or doing things. So, um, bear with us. Well, we're going to jump up right into a couple of questions. Uh, Jason, what's the first question? So we have a question from Stan. He says, do you guys always try to walk away with a signed contract or deal? What do you do if your prospective client wants to think about it? So that's a great question, Stan. Um, so what Stan asked was, do we always try to walk away from the table with a signed contract? So closing the deal or other times uh, when they do want to think about it that we, uh, that we walk away and, and give them that time. So you want to you wanna tackle that first? No, no. Yeah, sure. So I think some of it depends on what it is you're selling and, and what that sales cycle looks like. but. Uh, typically, the think about it is just an absolute objection that you have to handle right there on the spot and you will never get it. So back to the knife days, you know, if a, a wife said, oh, I need to think about it or I need to talk to my husband, 99.9% .9 of the time that's an absolute no sale. So um, you got to just tackle and, and get to the real objection uh, and, and then handle that objection as it comes. Yeah. One of the, uh, and I'm going to get super, um, I guess, tactical on this answer and give you like a really good um, way to overcome that objection. One of the things that, that I'll do, and we sell life insurance. Um, obviously, you know, what you sell is going to have a huge, it's going to play a huge role in this. But um, let's say I've got a stack of applications that I've sold today because we sell a lot of life insurance. And uh, so let's say I've got a stack of them and I'm sitting with a guy, a uh, girl right here. And they say, you know what, I'm just going to have to think about it. I uh, probably need to go home and talk to my spouse. Uh, what I've always done, and I've found this um, kind of breaks that barrier and gets them to go ahead and, and commit, is I'll literally put my hand on that stack of applications. Uh, you may not have something that you can put your hand on, but you can at least say these words. I'll say, you know what, I completely understand. Uh, that's what 75% of the people that signed up today said. But let me explain to you why they went ahead and signed up anyway. And so what happens when you do that um, is, number one, you already kind of reaffirm in their, in their brain that you know, they're not crazy, um, that, they're, that it was okay for them to say that, because that's what everybody's saying. So they're like, okay, cool. You know, so now you've released a little bit of that tension there. But then you said, let me go ahead and explain to you why they went ahead and signed up earlier. So now they're thinking, okay, well, everybody had this question, but everybody went ahead and, and signed the deal. Um, so it kind of reaffirms and then reaffirms and then gets them in the mode to saying yes And so that'll go right back into uh, The reason why they went ahead and signed up which bearing on your product that'll be different 
Um, and then immediately after I say that, I'll go with, you know, what do you want to start with? Um, the word start, uh, I think, is a very, very important word when you have someone that's on the fence because the word start doesn't sound as definitive, right? It's yeah. like, it's like, oh, well, we're just starting. So, I mean, let's just go ahead and start with this. Um, so, like, if you have different packages that you're selling or different quantities that you're selling, whatever that may be um, you know, in your industry, um, saying, so what do, you, what do you want to start with? And a lot of times in that situation, I'll even push them to a lower amount just to mm -hmm. even make them more comfortable. Well, why don't we go ahead and start here? Yeah. We can always change it uh, anytime later on. But I found that when you do that, when you, when, you, um, when you let them know that it's okay that they need to think about it, yeah. uh, but, but then let them know that, hey, everybody else thought that, but here's why they went ahead and signed up anyways. Um, that's been extremely effective. But for us in, in our sales process, uh, and I would think in many, uh, many others, yeah, you're not going to convince anybody um, in that minute, two minute, uh, when you're trying to close and, and they want to think about it. You're not going to close. You're not going to convince them to do something they're not going to do. Uh, they've already got their mind made up at that point, in my opinion. Um, the way we uh, build our sales structure and the system that we have in place, uh, which ultimately enables us to do such a high volume, is that we've got a lot of people to meet with. Um, so that's one thing that I think would help with that is if you've got a ton of other people to meet with and you really don't have time to sit there and try to convince uh, someone to, to buy. Um, if it's the best thing for them and obviously you know we're in sales in an ethical you know, um, uh, fashion and that ultimately you're trying to provide value to the other person if that other person's not perceiving that value from you, then just move on and go to the next one. But that, that kind of gets back to a lot of the pillars that we've talked about over the last few episodes of prospecting and face-to-face -face and all mm -hmm. those things that, that make it to where you've got enough um, leads in the pipeline or prospects in the pipeline that you're not necessarily so concerned. What happens a lot of times is people get so concerned about that one deal because they have everything riding on it because yeah. they don't have 12 other deals in the pipeline to work for. Uh, so they get so consumed with, I've got to close this one deal. And when that person says no, or they need to think about it, that's like your one big commission check that you've been waiting for. So you will oversell and oversell and oversell. It's, a, it's amazing what happens when you've got 12 more people to go to right afterwards, uh, that it changes your entire mentality. And the person across from you can feel that. They don't feel the desperation. That's right. Um, from you, so that's super important. But that's a great, great question. Well, and what I love about what you said is you you first disarm them with that simple, oh my gosh, it's it's totally okay, right? So there's the disarming, oh, yeah. and then it's just that simple feel felt bound, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of that sales 101. I totally I understand how you feel. This is how this whole stack of everybody that just purchased, you know, felt as well. And what I found is it's easy just to start with this. So. We, used to, we used to call that. I'm trying to long time ago in sales training, we used to call it like the hamburger method. You yeah, know? yeah, I it's think. It's like the bun, the top bun, or the bottom buns, like the, that's a great question, and mm -hmm. then like the middle part was kind of like, here's what I found, and the top part. And then you got to ask for the sale again, and that's, I think some people, they do all that, and then yeah. they just don't ask yeah, again. Right. You got to always ask, so that's good. Guess what? Stan is getting the book. Ask Gary B. Book. Okay, I didn't get a howl at the beginning because <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so caught off guard. I mean, I'm going to howl right, for you, We're going to get one for Sam. One, yeah, two, three. Oh, oh gosh, it was kind of cubbish. I got <laughs> to get a little deeper next time. All right, now we're warmed up. What's the next question, Jason? So we have a question from Stephanie Johnson, and she says, can you share tips on sales when it comes to direct sales? That's the first question, then I'll give you the second part of that question in a minute. That's a doozy. <laughs> I love it. Direct sales. Love it. So Oh, you, oh so we're answering the first part. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll 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 tackle the first part. I think with direct sales there is such a relationship part that's I there. It was sales, um but, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was. And it's all referral based typically. Yeah. Um and so you know, gosh, tips on that. Um, I think that the important thing is, is consistency. So many people in that business will, if they don't get immediate success, they just walk away. Mm -hmm. And I think that having a long-term mindset, and it all starts, I mean, everything starts in your mind and your belief. Um, but you got to really know, like, am I in this for the long haul? 
or am I just playing around? And you have to decide that first. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of different uh, ways that I could tackle this this answer, um, a, a few of which would cause me to jump on the soapbox and start <laughs> preaching about um, that whole direct sales word. I, world. I've, I've, I'm a little jaded in the MLM world just because things that have happened in my past, uh, but I do have a lot of experience in it. Um, I built uh, an MLM uh, team to like 6,500 people um, years ago um, and had some success with that and then had some disappointments uh, with that. But I think at the end of the day, what I always tell people, uh, this is just kind of like a little piece of advice, is when you're getting involved in, in any type of direct sales or multi-level um, business, and there's great ones and there's terrible ones. Um, and so I don't discount it, but I also don't um, assume any, any, <laughs> any good uh, in any company before I do a lot of research. But what I always tell people is when they're first getting involved to look at their upline, their uplines, upline, their uplines, uplines, upline, and start asking questions like, is there someone uh, on this team that has started from scratch, not brought up huge organization over from another company, but is there someone that has started from scratch, has put in a ton of work, and after 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, whatever that is, is making X per month. And whatever that X per month that's important for you, are they making $1,000 a month? Are they making $5,000 a month? Uh, but is there somebody um, that I can talk to that has done that? No experience within this company before, or a similar one, came in, put the work in, and now they're making this, and that's a great story. You need to be able to talk to that person. If your upline tells you, well, I mean, I don't know, I think there's this one guy, but you know, I don't know, if they kind of like skirt around that question, that's a problem uh, that, I would, that I personally would, would run from. Um, if they do have that person, then I would reach out to them and talk to them, because that's super important, because a lot of times um, in MLM, you have a lot of people from the top uh, the leadership teaching a system uh, for you to go out and work that they've actually never really done themselves. They just have kind of bounced around from deal to deal to deal to deal, bringing a group of people with them and getting floated checks when they do. So, hey, we're going to bring you over to our company. We're going to pay you a check for X amount of time uh, until you can get your team back over to this one from that one and get their volume up and then we'll stop that check when a lot of times the check doesn't even stop. So there's a lot of stuff that you need to look into on that, but this, when it comes down to it, it's just like anything else, right? If you treat it like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. If you treat it like a job, it'll pay you like a job. So the majority of things that happen in these direct sales um, deals is you'll have someone that joins and they're, you know, they're not really doing much of anything. They're like, you know, posting a bunch of stuff on Facebook, tons of stuff on Facebook. Like, you know, how have you not tried this amazing, you know, fat burning, cancer fighting? <laughs> like, yeah, they're posting about it a lot, but as far as actually like working, like talking to people, calling up people, setting up appointments, meeting with them, um, and then like, you know, 45, 60 days later, they're like, well, this just isn't going to work. <laughs> you know, I remember this one guy used to tell this story in MLM how he had this guy was like, I knew a guy that got in that deal, lost his house. <laughs> He's like, what? He's like, what? He's like, it's like two ninety nine to get started. What kind of house was it? <laughs> but like, but literally you have people that they have, you have to set your expectations based on your activity level that you're willing to put in. You can't set your expectations based on what some upline is telling you that they're making um, because if they are making good money, then they put in an insane amount of work. That's just, that's just the way the world works. There's not a single person that you know that is extremely successful that didn't put in just disgusting amounts of work uh, in order to get there. The more successful, the more work. So that's the biggest uh, advice that I would have is just treat it like a job. Uh, don't treat it like a hobby and that means every aspect of it is no different than if you had a boss to report to every single Friday on your activity and looking back at every single day and saying is the activity that I put in today uh, was that extraordinary because in order to get extraordinary results you have to do extraordinary things so uh, evaluating what you're doing on a daily basis and, and just working hard. I love that and I think setting activity goals you know yeah, instead yeah. of just I want to make X amount of dollars a month. It's okay. What activity is it going to take mm -hmm. to produce that, right? How many phone calls should I be making a day? And mapping that plan out and then sticking to it and doing it. And just doing the work. I mean, that's what you're saying. Work hard. And if you have specific activity goals, it helps to drive that. 
Yeah, and one thing, a um, little piece of advice that I would give, just because I made this mistake a long time ago. So I was involved with an MLM company right out of school, uh, right out of college, and uh, I mean, literally, it was like all I posted about on Facebook. Like, it was it, like everything. Um, it and it got to where like people literally, I think, were probably like blocking me. Mm. Like, I would see people out and like in like, like out downtown, they'd be like, "Hey, it's the that you know." They refer to me as like that guy. Um, and quite frankly, that's why over the last few years, uh, the successes that I've had, that I was very hesitant over the first year to put anything out there on social media. Um, and then now that I am doing it in a very specific way, a lot of it's is literally still trying to rebuild my brand amongst a lot of people that I used to just slam these posts mm -hmm. down their throat every single day. Um, there's a there's a subtlety um, uh, that that has to be used um, when you're promoting your deal, um, and that is you know let your success uh, ultimately. Um, be the indicator for someone, not your you know thirtieth post of the day uh, that people are just now avoiding or blocking. Uh, so be subtle in that, and I think you'll go a, a whole lot further. That's good. Any more questions? Second part of Stephanie's question. Oh yes. Can you tell us uh, how to be more personable when, with people in order to seal the deal? <laughs> you might want to take that. One. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tyler. We, I'm going to grab my notepad and <laughs> take some notes. <laughs> I love it. Um, I mean, really, it just comes down to being yourself. And what's funny is when, when Tyler said for me to answer it, Tyler actually is very personable. <laughs> Don't let him fool you. Um, but he is, in the sales process, he's actually not very. I mean, very, he will very little um, connect, but it's actually who he is, so he's being himself. Uh, and I think for you, Stephanie, it's it's be you and don't worry about if you are like somebody else that's also in sales, just be yourself. And as you're being yourself, that other person's gonna connect with authenticity. So, and I love, I, one of the things I love about Joseph being on here is, if I think of anyone that is just raw themselves, yeah. It's him, and, and I think part of why um, he has created Sales Wolves, I mean, you're, you're like his, mm. you know, what is it called, prodigy? Prodigy, <laughs> prodigy something. <Persia. laughs> that, it, it's, he really is just fully, 100% authentically Joseph, mm. and um, I think that's how he'd answer that question if he was here today. Yeah, and, and I think the, the big thing is not to force anything, and, and like mm. she was saying, be yourself. The only thing worse than being in a sales type, and, and see, like the scenarios that I'm in, it's very like fast-paced. The people that I'm that I'm dealing with are are of a certain personality type. Ninety-five percent of the time, that they respond better to uh, not so personal um, uh, interaction. But but those of you that are not in that situation, that are in a normal situation, we'll just have to talk about around here. It's weird. Um, sorry about that. The people that aren't in that type of situation, relationship building and morale and, and all, uh, not morale, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when you like meet, when you first meet somebody and you're trying to- Rapport. Make, rapport. rapport, yes. When, and rapport is so important and the small talk and the this and letting them know you're care, you care. Like when you're in that scenario, just making sure that you're not forcing it because people can immediately, immediately pick up uh, when you're faking it and when you're forcing it. And the, the easiest way I can think of, or the easiest example that I can think of is people that, um, yeah, that's a great question, Amanda. So Amanda, here's what we're gonna do. Um, this, is, this is the deal that I think I can get done for you, Amanda. Like if you say my name like more than once, I, I'm literally it's thinking off. that like someone, this, this guy went to some sales training and they said the more you say their name, the more likely they are to sell or to buy. Uh, that's one of the that's one of the easiest tells for me of someone that's trying to kind of force it, um, and certainly don't touch anybody. Maybe that's personal just me, space. Keep like, you just you don't know, know somebody like someone touches yeah. me. Oh, you know, I'm just like <laughs> I'm not buying anything. Um, unless it's my wife, but um, and then you're okay. <laughs> leaving that. Then I'm buying. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, don't make and there, there are kind of buckets of areas that rapport building is very easy, right? So mm -hmm. relationships, family, yeah, and then sure. career, pets, which is really funny, but for some people, pets is just <laughs> such an easy... Yeah. So there's little things of getting to know someone that 
That you just have to be genuine. You have to genuinely be interested in people. Um, and you know. but at the end of the day, these people don't need to be your friends to be your customers. That's, I mean, right. that's just the way I look at it. I mean, if you're providing a solution to a problem that they have, then that's the f biggest friendship that you can have. I mean, uh, it's nice, you know, obviously to build that rapport and have a great relationship. Um, but it's even better to follow through on what you say you're going to do and provide a, value. Uh, provide value. I mean, that's at the end of the day what's what's ultimately going to keep that relationship uh, together. You're not going to sell a crappy product to a uh, uh, the wrong customer because you're super sweet to them. That's right. <laughs> you know, or you right. may, but it's not going to end well. So we have a question. Stephanie, it's getting a scary B book. Oh! can't do that anymore. <laughs> Done. I'm no, no more right, howling. Just, I'm over it. Just felt <laughs> so we have a question coming from your page, um, actually. And it's, it's, uh, you said you're, I was going to say like your mom <laughs> or your wife. <laughs> What's that when you be home today? <laughs> did you she wants think, to know if your body. Did you not take the trash out in the morning? <laughs> she wants to know if your body. Uh, and so yes. uh, we have a question that she said, uh, Justin Grider, I'm going to mess that name up. Justin okay. says, so many companies out there, and it's a daunting task to figure out which ones have legitimate stuff and tools and resources to help support you for success and which ones don't. Mm -hmm. So I think this one is certainly back on the direct selling and MLM, um, and that's tough. That's, that's really tough. Um, you know, and, and I don't, and I don't necessarily want the rest of the questions to be MLM, MLM based, but, but this is a great question. Um, because there are, you know, so there's an interesting thing. I was talking to somebody the other day, and we're talking about how becoming an entrepreneur or saying that you're an entrepreneur is such a um, kind of hip, not hip, but like trendy. I, just sound, I, I literally just felt like I was 70 when I just said hip. <laughs> such a hip thing for the kiddos these days. Uh, but it's such a, it's like a cool thing. Like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. Or like, well, what does that mean? You just like sit at Starbucks and stare at your computer and uh, you're starting something, you know? Right. Um, but there's so many people that want to be an entrepreneur and the multi-level marketing or direct selling world has given all these people, and I'm not saying this is a good or bad thing, I'm just stating a fact that it's given these people the ability to become an entrepreneur because they're running their own business for the lowest barrier to entry ever, like you know, 300 bucks, 200 right. bucks, and now you own a business, so boom, you're an entrepreneur. Um, so that's why I think we've seen so many people take hold of that, um, especially over the last few years, as it has become more of a, of a cool thing to be an entrepreneur. But when you're looking at those companies, I mean, you just got to do your research. Mm -hmm. And the best way I know how to do that is just to follow your upline and see if you can sit down with people that are as high up as, as you possibly can go uh, within the organization, even if it's the owners of the company. I mean, not everyone's going to have, you know, going to be able to pull that off, but if you can, um, that would be my greatest advice because I, for one, I can trust people, um, and, and with our, within our organization, we talk about loyalty all the time, and it's not loyalty um, to a person, it's loyal, loyalty to a set of beliefs and uh, principles that we're all after, but with, with this type of situation, I, can, I feel like I'm a pretty good judge if someone's trustworthy, if I can just... Mm -hmm believe what they're telling me is true. I mean, I always talk about that's my story on how I got involved with this. I just believe Nathan and yeah. Joseph. Um, and so, you know, I, I went all in on it. If I could meet with like the top tier people in the company, if not some people on the actual corporate side uh, of that it, of that company, I feel like if I did, I would be able to feel from them mm -hmm. um, whether or not they were just completely full of it or if this was like a legit deal. Um, a lot of that has to do with, you know, just you know, beliefs and, and different things that we won't get into now, uh, but things that I'll be able to take from that person just in how I see them interacting with other people um, and how they talk to me and how, they, how I see them talk to others, uh, that I'll be able to know that if from the top down, if those people are squared away, like if they're super right. sharp, good people um, that, that I could get behind, then maybe the, the company would be the same, but if it's not that way, I mean, there's some sleazy people at the top. Um, and you'll be able to figure that out. And, yeah. and I wouldn't want to be getting involved uh, with something like that. And so I think that's probably a good indicator for my people. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think also for me, like I care about the product. I know, <laughs> some, people, that, yeah. I know some people kind of, 
-hmm. you know, Joseph jokes that, and we are loyal, and we could go and sell anything, truly, but I, to me, just because of who I am, like, I really have to believe in what yeah, I'm selling. Like, sure. I have to feel good about it. So I think maybe for a starting point for somebody, like, what are you passionate about? What do you mm -hmm. like? What, what needs do you see that, you know, whenever, I, you mentioned it earlier, like, is there the need? Yeah. And what are you going to be, you know, solving or, or providing? So I think looking at the product and then, like you said, yeah. the, the leadership of the company is huge. Um, I would start there and, and you know, I'll, I'll keep my, my MLM yeah. stuff quiet. But, uh, was that, was that um, Greg or Jeff? Justin. 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 Sorry about that. Book. Justin, ask Gary B. Book. We're not going to howl for you. Sorry. But you got to look at it your way. So keeping on the concept of product, uh, Bill has a question. He wants to know, how do you feel about the concept of sell me this pin? Is the relevancy in the pitch or the quality of the pin? Hmm. I would say it's 100% in the pitch. Totally, I've yeah. Only had, I've only had to do that one time, and oddly enough, it was for like the least important sales job that I've ever even applied Funny, for. Funny, I've never, I have never. It was like at a retail clothing, like, um, Something like super simple, like at the mall. No retail. I swear, wow. it was maybe so it'll sell my pen. Yeah. Okay. Sell it to me. Go. Let's do it. I, I literally. I mean, this Ooh, is. Wait, it's a long long. Is it, This one might be about the quality. No, actually, so we might lose it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think there's a lot in that pitch when um, number one, it puts people on the spot, so you're able to see like mm -hmm. I just like reacted, like I was like, oh my god. Uh, um, there's a lot. It's a lot in how people react to getting put on the spot. Yeah. Um, if they can just start flowing with anything, um, it's it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you're, you're just establishing those kind of basic principle of sales, like asking questions. I think yeah. if someone started asking me questions, I would be blown away. If I was like, mm -hmm. "Sell me this pen," they were like, "So tell me um, during throughout your day, um, how much do you use a pen?" Or um, so throughout your day. Um, where do you find yourself where you're like, man, if I, I need a pen, or like different like questions, like even the sillies it'll be with a pen. Yeah. But like start asking questions like, how many pens do you think you go through a year? Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, so, so the office that you work in, uh, are there a lot of pens? Is there, is there a lot of pens? <laughs> right. You know, things like that I think would be awesome, but I don't think it has anything to do with the, the quality of the, yeah. the pen. I don't think I'd be selling it on the sleekness and the, the aer <laughs> oh, aerodynamics. <laughs> That's a good question. And, it's getting you an ask Gary book. Boom. So uh, this is going to be our last question. What's that person's name? Bill. Bill. This is going to be our last question. It comes from Mr. Craig. And uh, what he would like to know is how will Mr. this... Mr. Craig? Uh, Mr. Craig. Huh. How will this book help me be a better salesperson? We're giving away the book. They want to know what's in the book. I love it. Oh my gosh. I just started reading it. And I will say it is, it is quickly jumping into my top ones. What do you think? So, I mean, I'm just a huge, huge, huge Gary Vaynerchuk fan. Um, huge. And, I mean, I, I live on the road. I'm on the road three to four nights a week and days a week, and it's all um, driving, traveling. It's not, not flying, so I spend a lot of time just by myself. And it's so funny. I got to meet Gary um, two March. I think it was two Marches ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> March the other day, it was the March, the time I marched before that. Uh, but not this past year, uh, not this past March, but the March before that, we got to meet um, Gary and Andy Frisella uh, when he launched this book. It was at the launch of this book. And uh, they both spoke, Andy spoke, uh, which was awesome. Gary spoke, which was awesome. But then we paid um, to go to this VIP deal afterwards where we got to sit down in a conference room uh, with both of them. It was supposed to be like for an hour. Um, there was, it was me, uh, Joseph, um, who you guys know, um, our other partner, Nathan, and there was like th only three or four other people in this conference room, and it was supposed to be for an hour. Uh, we ended up spending two and a half hours, so he spoke, and we didn't get out of his speaking deal until like 11. Uh, we got in the conference room about 11. We didn't leave till like 1.30 in the morning. Uh, it was the coolest experience of my entire life as far as in the business world in that the guy you see on on YouTube or on Facebook, like that's really him. Like it was, it was exactly. And it's so funny because I've, over the last two and a half years, I have spent so much time just digesting every single thing he's put out. Um, 
you know, it started with the Ask Gary V uh, show and then into the Daily V now, which I'm just obsessed with. Uh, but the amount of value that he's putting out every single day for 100% free, I had watched everything like two or three times. Um, so when we got into that conference room and we were talking, I literally felt as though I had like inside jokes. I mean, that's like, that's how, <laughs> like I remember he started talking and he's like, yeah, you know, this interview I did the other day with Seth Godin, um, you know, it was kind of interesting. And I immediately was like, yeah, it got real interesting in the comments. And he was like, yeah. That's exactly what I was talking about. I was like, yeah, because everybody was hating on you in the comments because you kept interrupting him. He's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like, how, how did you know that? Um, and then he was like, but you know what? You want to know the crazy thing? So Seth uh, Godin um, sent me a text message later that day. Uh, not me, uh, to Gary. <laughs> uh, sent Gary a text message later that day saying he just wasn't feeling well and that he apologized because I felt like I was being, um, I was a little off during the interview. And he was like, how cool is that, that all these people are sitting here saying that I was being rude and interrupting, and then Seth uh, texts him and says that he apologizes, mm -hmm. that he, and so every single thing that Gary does, um, it's all about being the one that's providing the most value. So he always talks about this concept of 5149. So every human being that he comes in contact with, he wants to be providing 51% or more of the value. So. In his mind, it's like it's having the leverage, right? Mm -hmm. So what he's doing, and it's really, it's really gone into what I've tried to do on my social media so far, is that I've committed to only providing value and not selling a single thing. I've made a mental number of years that I'm going to do that before I ever um, do anything that's like a transaction-based or try to sell anything whatsoever that is 100% just to provide value. And that's what he's doing, but by doing so, he is creating such an insanely disproportionate amount of value that he has put out that literally the people like myself and like all the others that follow him literally are like asking him, like, what, like, what can we do for you? Like, mm -hmm. what can we pay, like buy from you? Um, and it's creating that type of of following just by doing the right thing, just simply because it's the right thing. Yeah. Um, and so his whole thing is like, I could, he's like, I could monetize tomorrow. Every single thing that I do, I could make it this much a month to have access to it. And tomorrow I'll make tens of millions of dollars first day. But his, his whole concept is that the value of building that type of audience that you've been providing value to over that period of time um, is just invaluable. I mean, it's, it can't even put a price tag on mm -hmm. it. Um, and so that's exactly what he did with this book. Like he took every single thing from the Ask Gary Vee show, all of it, even the stuff that they didn't that they didn't show, put it into this book, and then broke it down into in the chapters based on topics, and then individual questions, and then went further in depth into the answers of those questions than he did on the show with. A more current twist on it because some of the questions would have been asked you know a year year and a half prior and so he went in and did a uh, did a complete 360 approach to answering the question based on current um, current conditions not only that the audio for this book is even better than the than the actual book itself the audio is like 11 and a half hours long or something crazy wow. like that so he goes even more depth on that and I've, I've listened to that a couple of times but um, whether it's social media um, sales, um, just life in general, running a business, uh, let's see a couple of the parenting. Mm -hmm. There's a whole chapter on hustle, which we love that. Uh, education, family business, uh, Facebook ads, like a whole chapter on Facebook ads. So he gets like super, super specific gratitude, leadership, management, self awareness, music, sports, wine, and just all of this um, stuff broken down. Again, broken down into question and answer so that you can literally pick it up and just read like three questions, read the answers, and then put it back down and not feel like it's one of those books where like, oh, I haven't read that in a while. I gotta kind of yeah. catch back up, figure out where I am. Cool. So I love it. It's That's great. Good. So uh, this is the the first q and A. It won't be the last, uh, but I think it's been good. Uh, I hope you guys have gotten something out of it. If you have, uh, do us a huge favor uh, and share this on Facebook. Um, don't share it on mine, uh, share it on the Sales Wolves page. So again, if you are on this phone, if I'm pointing to you, <laughs> go over to facebook.com slash saleswolves um, and please share uh, this live link um, on your page because that would really, really mean a lot to us. Uh, again, back to providing value, we don't charge anything for this. Uh, we don't have uh, 
sponsors you know for this this is not something that is income producing but it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy uh, and just mental capacity to pull it off um, each and every week um, but that's just what we're all about is providing value for people and especially salespeople because we just have a certain uh, heightened level of uh, love for them so uh, any last uh, parting words Amanda parting words I'm not gonna howl since I got that <laughs> out of my system but I love it I love you and, and Joseph what you're providing and doing it for free I think it is a different it's just a different concept and model mm -hmm. uh, than than really anything in the last 50 years I mean really providing all that free value um, it's 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 special it's unique so I'm excited to just see this grow and ripple and, and really bring a ton of value to a lot of people very cool well with that uh, we will be back next Friday with a normal episode and it's gonna be an awesome episode we were working on it today it's gonna to be great um, and we will come back at that will come out Friday usually Friday afternoon right around what, about four or five is when they're coming out now um, so about four or five o'clock next Friday and with that this is Amanda McAbee I'm Tyler Harris and we are the sales wolves Ahoo!